Goku is in the healing pod, Frieza is beating down on Gohan, Vegeta and Krillin, and the fate of the universe hangs in balance. But there is a savior on his way, hiding untold potential within himself. This is what if Piccolo got his potential unlocked early. But before we begin, the like goal for this video is 5000 likes, just to let me know that you would like to see more of this series. And if you would like to watch part 2 early, it's already out for channel supporters. Anyways, let's begin with the story. So in this story, Piccolo has been revived a couple of hours earlier than usual on Namek, getting teleported with the second wish. Immediately after seeing Paranga, Frieza knocks out Nail and rushes towards the Dragon Balls. But Guru hasn't died just yet. Piccolo finds Nail and fuses with them. He thinks that this power is going to be enough to deal with Frieza, and the Namekian quickly makes his way towards Paranga. There, he finds Frieza battling Vegeta and threatening Gohan and the others, battling right under Paranga. But Piccolo is not going to allow Frieza to get any of his wishes. He attacks Frieza, clashing over and over again. Though this is his first time on Namek, he feels a deep connection to it, and it's clear that Piccolo can actually stand a chance against the monster. Vegeta can't believe it, but Piccolo could actually defeat him. Frieza is extremely hurt and the Namekian gets ready to blast him away. But as he's about to do it, Frieza's fears make him realize that this is no time for games. After all, Frieza had to use his third form to deal with a nail-infused Piccolo in the original story. So instead, Frieza chooses to jump straight into his final form. Frieza disappears from sight and behind Piccolo, his energy skyrocketing way above what anyone could have imagined. Even Goku in the healing pod could sense it. Frieza began beating on Piccolo relentlessly. Gohan and tried to intervene, but he couldn't do anything. But in the corner, he saw Paranga again, seconds away from disappearing. He quickly rushed to Dende, thinking of a plan. He told Dende to wish for Piccolo to get his potential unlocked, just like Krillin and himself had. Dende agrees, quickly wishing on the Eternal Dragon. Paranga's eyes glowed, and as the Dragon Ball spread, they turned into stone, halfway through their destination, one even striking Frieza on the face. The Grand Elder had passed away, but once Frieza chucked the Dragon Ball away, he watched as Piccolo glow a golden color, his skin lightened, and the lines on his body disappeared. Piccolo was changing right before his eyes, but he didn't seem much more powerful. Meanwhile, far, far away, a certain god of destruction twisted and turned in his sleep, dreaming, or perhaps having a premonition about a powerful warrior. But on Namek, Frieza's rage pushed him towards Piccolo, but Piccolo's aura slowed down the monster. The Namekian grabbed Frieza's hand and threw him up to the sky, firing a mouth blast that nearly fried the monster. Piccolo continued to battle Frieza, with the others watching. Of course, this Piccolo isn't as strong as the one in the original superhero. He's in fact a lot weaker, but much more powerful than Frieza. For all the innocent Namekians you've killed, I swear, I will beat you, Frieza. Frieza just couldn't keep up with his speed, until Piccolo snapped forward in the stomach, putting him out of commission. Piccolo raised his hand up, ready to blast Frieza away, but the Emperor began to beg for his life. Please, spare me. Sorry, I'm not as forgiving as Goku. No second chances like he gave me. But Frieza swipes his hand across Piccolo's face, temporarily blinding him. But as Frieza's going to attack again, he instead feels an immense pain in his stomach, as Piccolo punched straight through him. Frieza fell to the ground, completely defeated. He continued to beg and plead. Overjoyed, Krillin and Gohan ran over to Piccolo. The Namekian smirked down at them. While on the healing pot, Goku could feel himself shake at the energy he sensed. He had no idea Piccolo could achieve such intense power. He was getting really excited, a new goal to reach. Only for Vegeta to rise up to the sky and fire a key ball at the group. Piccolo made Gohan jump out of the way, but Frieza was struck, killing the near half-dead emperor. Vegeta laughed about his victory. He was supposed to be the one to defeat Frieza. He was supposed to be the Super Saiyan. Why had this Namekian gotten his destiny? But as he angrily rushed down at Piccolo, exclaiming that he can't be all that, suddenly, as if a thunderstrike, Goku landed between them both. He looked up to smirk at Piccolo, while Vegeta was left in disbelief. Kakarot had also grown so much, he was being left behind in the trash. Goku shook hands with Piccolo, a spark of electricity surrounding them. He promised to catch up to him. After all, he can't grow if he doesn't have someone to challenge him along the way. Piccolo smirked, but reminded him that Earth will be his with this new power. Goku didn't buy it. Vegeta yelled out once more, firing blasts over and over, angry at this line of events. But Piccolo had enough, appearing behind him and chopping him on the back of the neck. Vegeta was instantly knocked out. Goku decided that it was time to go back home, and once there, used the Dragon Balls to revive everyone on Namek. The team agrees, with Gohan and Krillin promising to visit Dende. Finding Bulma and taking the knocked out 
with Vegeta. Their return home is peaceful, with Gohan, Goku, and Piccolo getting some time to train together. Even just this short time training against Piccolo helped Goku and Gohan grow immensely, and eventually even Vegeta joined in. He was going to try to leave Earth as soon as he could, but he could use the training against Piccolo if he wanted to surpass this Super Namekian eventually. But it was painfully clear that the difference between them all was immense. When they landed, it was strange. Piccolo seemed more distant, even to Gohan. He placed his hand on the young boy's head and told him that they'll see each other soon. Piccolo left for the wilderness, while Goku and Gohan went home and Vegeta stayed with Bulma. After a year in seclusion, filled with rigorous training and deep introspection, Piccolo realized what this new power meant for him. How was he going to use it? He had a responsibility as the son of the Demon King. There was this deep guilt that he would feel if he didn't fulfill his destiny. After all, even during the cell arc in the original story, Piccolo proclaims that he's still evil and still wishes to take over the world. So I believe if Piccolo did get this much stronger so fast and tower above everyone while no one else was attacking, he would actually try to do something about it. In that year's time, the Dragon Balls were used to return those killed on Namek back to life. And after a few months, the three Namekian wishes were used to revive the Z Fighters. Piccolo isn't there for any of it, though Gohan always hopes to see his friend. However, after some time in the wilderness, Piccolo finally decides to enact his plan, and with a heavy heart, he leaves his solitude, heading towards the lookout. Kami, sensing Piccolo's troubled spirit and destructive intent, confronts him with a mix of disappointment but understanding, reminding him of the good he has done and the bonds he has formed, especially with Gohan. This does strike a chord with Piccolo, and Kami can sense it. He has a soft spot for the same boy, but he truly believes that this is his destiny to fulfill. At the very least, he has to try again. Just as he was about to defend himself, thinking perhaps Piccolo would seal him away once more and eat the bottle, Piccolo just jumped off the lookout and left. Kami was deeply saddened by the turn of events, sending out a message to Goku and the others, warning them of the impending danger. But he also warns Goku that something seemed strange, as if Piccolo's heart wasn't in this truly, despite his dark aura. Gohan, upon hearing the news, is struck with disbelief and a profound sense of betrayal. He remembers the moments he spent training under Piccolo, the life lessons, the bond they shared. This revelation shakes him to the core, igniting a fiery determination to confront him. The Z Fighters unite with the common goal of stopping him. It's not hard to find his energy spike. Originally, he had thought of facing his former allies at the King's Castle just like his father had, but he chose a different place. Yunzebit Heights. It reminded him of Namek. It was a fierce fight, and as they engaged in battle, it wasn't just physical, but an emotional struggle. Some were more hurt than others, like Krillin and Gohan, while others saw this as inevitable, like Tien, who truly believed that Piccolo had never changed. The Z Fighters united their forces, led by Goku. Vegeta had originally refused to join the battle, but the more he felt the power of the Namekian, it just made his blood boil. He didn't want to help Kakarot, but he did want to prove himself. So. As the battle continued, Vegeta rushed their way. Similarly, Gohan wasn't allowed to come, as this battle would just be too emotionally heavy for the kid, and Goku didn't want him to face his old friend. But sensing the battle made Gohan tear up, he had to act. As the battle escalates, the human Z fighters, including Krillin, Tien, and Yamcha, throw themselves into the fray, but are quickly overpowered by Piccolo's immense strength. They are brutally injured, one by one. Krillin tries to reason with Piccolo, telling him that they fought together on Namek, against the Saiyans. Even during their battle, at the World Tournament, Piccolo got respect for the human. Piccolo scoffed. This was true, but he wasn't even willing to admit it to himself. A simple explosion sent them all flying off. When Vegeta arrived, Piccolo faced off against him, recognizing the Saiyan's desperation. Their battle was powerful, with Vegeta driven by pride and the need to prove himself. But despite his ferocity, Piccolo overpowers him, sending him crashing to the ground and defeating him, demoralizing him, but not dead. Vegeta landed right before Krillin, who was surprised to see him still alive. And the prince took this as an insult, but Krillin didn't mean it like that. Instead, he meant it that if Piccolo was going to kill any of them, it was certainly going to be Vegeta, right? Why hadn't he done it? The sight of his friends beaten and broken ignites a fiery surge within Goku. Goku continued to fight for his friends over and over again, but he knew Piccolo was holding back, almost like he was trying to enjoy the fight above anything else. This angered Goku, as more of his friends were injured and hurt, and the more Piccolo rejected his extended palm, Goku felt something surge within him, a power he hadn't felt before. Tien was being held by the neck, while Krillin laid on his back, eyes barely open. He had seen this image before, back when the original King Piccolo attacked. Back then, he had allowed his son to escape, and that decision now culminated in more turmoil and destruction. Had he made a mistake? Was this now his burden? He cursed under his breath. 
knowing he had to stop Piccolo now. And that determination exploded in a Super Saiyan aura. His hair turned golden and spiked up, actually surprising Piccolo for the first time as a punch was landed. It didn't hurt Piccolo too much, but the Namekian actually smiled. He was enjoying this. If only for a moment, Goku was a Super Saiyan. Vegeta witnessing this transformation is consumed by a mix of awe and jealousy. The legend of the Super Saiyan, something he believed was his destiny, was unfolding before his eyes, and his shock turned to anger, driving him to throw himself recklessly into Piccolo. Gohan was already on the way to the battlefield when he felt the Super Saiyan transformation, and that made him burst forward, finally arriving at the battlefield, only to watch as Goku approached Piccolo, while Vegeta was thrown to the side. The fate of Earth was hanging in the balance. Just as they're about to collide, Krillin, battered but determined, grabs Goku's leg. He tells him that he noticed Piccolo wasn't killing them. He was showing restraint, despite his overwhelming power. He hasn't killed anyone. This revelation actually pierces through Goku's rage, causing him to falter for a second. Piccolo wasn't in his right mind. He didn't want to do this. He just thought he had to. Even so, Goku had to confront him before anyone else got hurt. Piccolo was impressed by the Super Saiyan power as they continued to clash overhead over and over again. But Goku kept telling him to go all out, to stop holding back. Didn't he claim he wanted to avenge his father? This actually struck a nerve with Piccolo, who fired a blast at Goku. The Saiyan responded with his own Kamehameha, but Piccolo's potential unleashed power overcame Goku and sent him crashing down to the ground. The fight continued. As Gohan noticed that Piccolo was actually smirking, he was enjoying the fight. Goku's training with Piccolo means that this Super Saiyan is stronger than the one on Namek in the original story. In a way, Goku felt like Piccolo was testing him, but Goku's new Super Saiyan power couldn't last forever. And when Piccolo disappeared and reappeared before Goku, Goku's Super Saiyan power began to sparkle in and out. The Namekian stood right before his enemy ready to defeat him. But Piccolo's hand shook. He wasn't sure why. He had achieved his goal, he had surpassed Goku and was ready to kill him. This was a moment he had been waiting for for many years. This was the destiny King Piccolo had bestowed upon him. But as Goku looked him in the eyes, Piccolo looked back. The Saiyan noticed the true conflict within the demon. At that moment, he looked less like his father and more like Kami. The wisdom and love for Earth hiding somewhere within, Piccolo had changed. But at that moment, Gohan rushed down to stop him from attacking his father, telling him that he can tell Piccolo's going to stop. But there was anger being emitted from the boy like never before. Goku couldn't stop him now, as he jumped to attack Piccolo. The Namekian didn't want to fight back, but Piccolo was caught in this balancing act and couldn't think straight. Gohan's whirlwind of emotions was such that it pushed him to get stronger and stronger, attacking Piccolo despite not wanting to. Gohan's emotions were driving his power. As the sun begins to set, each of Gohan's pleas and attacks seem to slowly chip away of Piccolo's resolve, until finally Piccolo's defenses falter for a second. The Namekian doesn't want to attack Gohan, but when the kid puts everything he has into one final blast, the Namekian responds with an attack of his own that easily overtakes the kid. Gohan lands against the rock formation, extremely hurt, his purple gi battered and torn. That's when the realization comes. Piccolo runs to Gohan's side. The kid is hurt, but he was tough, and Piccolo admired that. The Namekian looked at his hands as he reverted back to base form. He apologized for what he did. He couldn't continue this battle. He was part of the legacy of the Demon King, and he didn't know if it was just Nail talking within him, or perhaps Gohan really had changed him. But this is not what he wanted. He needed time to understand this power further, and to make amends for what he'd just done. Piccolo was emotionally Drained, and he made a quiet retreat. This isn't what he wanted. And just like that, the great new era of the Demon King ended as fast as it began. The Z fighters slowly recover, unsure of what this could mean as Piccolo disappears. His absence is felt by everyone, but especially Gohan, who looks up to the stars wondering about the future and the fate of his mentor. The young Saiyan is unsure on how he feels. On one hand, he will miss his old master, but on the other, Piccolo's choice to depart and to attack hurt him greatly. But somehow, deep in his heart, he knew they weren't going to be apart for much longer. He didn't know if Piccolo was still his friend, yet, deep in his heart, he hoped he was okay. However, Gohan wasn't the only one seeking Piccolo. In the furthest reaches of space, a spaceship sits, as an old green hand reaches into a bowl of pills. There it is again, I sensed it, the strength of the Namekian. What does it mean, sir? Danger, that's for certain, for the universe and for our plan. How could an Amekian get so strong? Don't underestimate us, Midamacha. Although it is an incredible jump, I have my suspicions. We will keep an eye on him, and on planet Earth, and I will obtain that power for myself. Yes, 
Lord Slug. On H764, a power is felt in outer space, a terrifying force coming down stronger than even Frieza. Goku thinks this won't be any issue. He has been training his Super Saiyan power and even training Gohan and Vegeta. Vegeta originally wanted to leave, but after witnessing the power of Super Saiyan Goku, he has decided to stay and get that power for himself, inching himself closer every day. The Z Fighters gather together to see just who is coming. The presence is powerful and very similar to Frieza. Once the shadow of the spaceship darkens the area, the warriors prepare. Goku leads the charge, already in Super Saiyan. From the ship, the Frieza soldiers run out as King Cold takes heavy steps. He demanded to see who was the one that killed his darling boy back on planet Namek. He wasn't here for some man with blonde spiky hair. Although, wait a minute. That did look like something familiar. Didn't Grandpa Chill say something about this? That's when Goku says, Sorry, he's not around right now. But trust me, I'm more than enough to deal with you. Goku zoomed forward and in a flash, the armored squadron dropped to the floor, defeated. He then spun on his heel to look at King Cold. The Emperor responded with a blast, which Goku jumped over, grabbed Cold by the head and spun him into a mountainside. Vegeta exclaims to finish him off before he transforms, but King Cold just says, transform? They were all confused, but before Goku could act, a pair of flashes struck down on the Emperor. The wind flew past them as he exploded. Everyone was left in awe. Who could have possibly defeated a monster like King Cold so easily? Before them stood two boys, both in their teens. Their Super Saiyan aura flaring made Vegeta's blood boil. Trust me, you'll thank us for that. Sorry for showing up like this, but we need to talk. No one trusted them, especially Gohan. The other boy kept looking at him. Goku approached them slowly, sensing the power within them. Their Super Saiyans looked a bit distraught, as if being there took a lot from them emotionally. They realized something was missing. Oh, Piccolo, come out, we need you out here too. Everyone was surprised except for Goku. He had sensed the Namekian. Gohan was excited to see him, but stopped himself. He wasn't sure how to approach him. Was he still trying to kill them all? He doubted it, but in his heart, he was still a little hurt. Even so, Piccolo gave him a knowing smile. Everyone froze when they saw Piccolo, but his key was calm and collected. They didn't know if they could trust him, but they could at least be at ease for now. The two boys began to speak to Goku and Piccolo in particular. We come from a distant future, nearly 20 years from now. In three years, several androids will appear and try to take revenge on Goku. Thankfully, with the right amount of training, and thanks to Piccolo's abilities, you'll be able to easily defeat him. However, in our reality, Goku dies before it, because of the heart virus. You never get to meet your second son. Bulma and the others were in shock. Second son? Goku giggles, saying that him and Chi-Chi were planning on having a second child in a few years, which also surprises Gohan. He notices that upon hearing this, the other boy looked down at the ground. We have medicine for you, but that's not why we're here. Not exactly. Seven years later, a monster named Majin Buu will be revived. Without Goku, Vegeta, Gohan, and Piccolo are the only ones around to defend the world. So let me explain what exactly happened in the future for this future, quote-unquote, Trunks and Goten to be so different. Goku and Piccolo had continued to train together, while Chi-Chi is pregnant with Goten. Since Goku had been around for the whole time, instead of going to Yardrat, Goten is born sooner. However, Goku never meets his son because of the heart virus. Goku and Vegeta do get a lot of time to train together, and Vegeta slowly learns to love Earth, a lot sooner than in the original story. The androids are defeated by Piccolo and the others. But without Goku, Vegeta isn't as driven, and Piccolo just believes that he can defeat everyone with raw strength. When Shin and Kivito arrive at the World Tournament, the Z Fighters aren't there. It isn't until Piccolo starts to sense people dying at the tournament that he shows up with with Gohan and Vegeta. Buu attacks at the same time as in the present timeline. Most things happen as normal. The Z Fighters scramble to find and stop Buu. Piccolo and even Shin thinks that he's strong enough to deal with them. Piccolo faces him with the others watching. But as he thinks Buu is defeated, Piccolo turns around and Buu fires a chocolate beam. Gohan jumps in the way and gets turned into chocolate. Piccolo blames himself and tries to defeat Buu, but he's blinded by rage. Vegeta goes Super Saiyan 2, managing to cut Buu's antenna off. However, while Piccolo blindly attacks him, Buu uses uses said antenna to absorb him. The others watch in shock and horror as the monster powers up and begins attacking them all. This Piccolo absorbed Buu is much smarter than the other one. Kami senses that Piccolo has been absorbed and now his other half is living within Buu. He realizes that he needs to sacrifice himself as soon as he can so that Piccolo dies within Buu and he'll be easier to defeat then. Vegeta is the only person he can think of that can kill him but in the midst of a busy battle he begs Shin and Kibito to do it. They are worried about it but just as they are about to do it, Buu jumps in and 
and absorbs Kami as well. It's not a crazy power-up, but their fate is worsening. Shin tells the others to flee, as this will be a massacre. Babidi shouts at Boo to calm down and instructs them to take down the Kai immediately, as it is he who he wants to get revenge on. Shin falls, and the other Z fighters follow. Even Babidi gets killed by this Boo. Vegeta is the only one that remains, and has to make a tough call, choosing to flee the battlefield at Krillin's request. His mission was now to protect his family at all costs. Vegeta arrives at Capsule Corp, where Trunks and Goten had been playing. He tells them that they need to escape right away, that they need to train, avenge Gohan, Kakarot, and the others. Train to get stronger. They fly out to where King Cold's ship remained, and along the way, Goten picks up the power pole from Kami's lookout. There's really no time for this, but Boma insists on letting him do it. If they have to escape Earth, then this will be Goten's last connection to the planet. But Majin Buu senses Vegeta escaping, and he comes his way, attempting to kill him and the rest of the family. Vegeta chooses to stay behind, as the others flee into the spaceship, blasting off into space. Vegeta's final atonement happens, sacrificing himself so that the next generation of Saiyans can survive. Planet Earth is doomed, as Bulma aimlessly tries to find Namek in order to get things straight, trying to find the Dragon Balls. They send out a beacon looking for help, and eventually, Jacko gets it. The Galactic Patrol finds them, and Bulma reunites with Jacko, begging him to take them to Namek so they can restore Planet Earth. Jacko tells them that this is a weird request considering Namek is completely empty and devoid of life. They're not entirely sure what happened, but Namekians are now considered extinct. Bulma's heart sinks. Is there really no hope for planet Earth? Bulma loses all hope, but after a few months and encouragement from the boys, she starts a new project. They survive in space and all three of them join the Galactic Patrol and go out on missions together, as Bulma becomes somewhat of a commander and their highest ranking scientist pretty quickly. While also, in their spare time, she uses their resources to start building something, a plan to save their timeline. A time machine. Bulma finally completes the time machine for Goten and Trunks, telling them that not only do they have to save Goku with the heart medicine, they have to train, make themselves stronger in case this doesn't change the future. They must also warn Piccolo and the others to be careful about Majin Buu. If they can stop Piccolo from having his hubris get the better of him, then they can stop Majin Buu. In the future, Buu has continued to go from planet to planet, turning things into chocolate, eating them, and destroying planets. He doesn't have a need to absorb anything else, as he is the strongest being. Even so, for some reason, he never really approaches the Galactic Patrol. Bulma suspects that deep within, part of Piccolo is telling him to not do it, though she isn't sure. I will also know that they never faced Cell in this timeline, as he was still being developed, and he never came back from the future like in the original story. The Cell that was being developed died in Earth Explosion, but that doesn't mean he'll never show up. Back at the present, we see that Goten and Trunks omitted just who they are to the heroes, and refused to answer any questions on the subject. The two hybrids conclude their explanation and tell the Z fighters how they will return back to the present a few months before the androids initially make themselves known, if their future doesn't change. It's training that they need, so they will come back to fight, as this will serve them as more experience. They need to learn from Piccolo. The two bid farewell and travel back to the future. However, far away, Babidi, who was keeping surveillance on Earth, senses a large spike in Keeley, caused by the hybrid Saiyans, Piccolo, and Goku. Babidi decides that now Earth is strong enough for him to attack, and makes his plan to revive Majin Buu. The journey to Earth takes less than a year, and they manage to descend unnoticed like in the original story. The wizard then decides to search for Earth's most evil inhabitants using magic. He stumbles upon an old mad scientist locked away in a lab. He has found none other than Dr. Dro. Intrigued, Babidi takes it upon himself to invade his mind. Dro at first resists, but after getting a taste of the power that comes with Babidi's magic, he decides to strike a deal. If he takes Boo away from Earth once he's born, Dro will help Babidi find strong warriors and have the androids to help. However, Jiro isn't fully human. He is nearly entirely android except for his brain. He's a mad genius so he has safeguards in place. Even if Bobbity is able to possess his human side, he can't control the machine side of Jiro, and that's most of them. So before allowing Bobbity to fully control his mind, Jiro ensures that 19 has a plan B, an old set of androids that could continue to be evolved upon, in case Majin Buu didn't go as planned. Just in case, a dark M forms over Jiro's forehead. He retains some of his free will and agency, as deep down he hopes that his androids will be enough to put him on top when all things are said and done. But now, his partnership with Bobbity begins as he develops androids to collect energy for Majin Buu. 
Thanks for watching everyone. I had a lot of fun writing this story. I'm still in the process of writing it, but I'm for once ahead of the schedule. A huge thank you to the channel supporters as always. Part 2 of this story is out for them right now. And if you would like a new Dragon Ball Full story, What If Broly Was Found Early and Trained by the Kaioshin is out now on the screen. See you guys there!